Anyone can make a game. All it takes is a little tenacity and dedication because making a good game takes time. I'm Pirate Poots, and in this series I'm going to introduce you to one of the simplest game engines to get started with and hopefully it will give you the encouragement to start working on a game of your own. RPG Maker MV is the tool that I will be using for this series. While many game engines boast the ability to create games with no coding, this one is a great start for those seeking to either become a hobbyist or take a step toward greater things. Additionally, even a child can use it. I've been using RPG Maker since I was at least 12, and it gave me a firm grasp of many concepts that I even use today when creating games using Unity or even Unreal. In this video, I will introduce you to the editor and show you many of the features you will make use of regularly. In following videos, we will go over some of the features in greater detail, so let's get started making our first game. When you first open RPG Maker, you are presented with a blank screen. Our first step is to create a new project. Click on the icon on the top left that looks like a sheet of paper. We are now presented with a new project dialog. Here you can tell the editor which folder you'd like the game to be saved in and the name of your project, as well as the different title if you choose. Keep in mind this information can be changed at a later date so you can just as easily keep it named Project 1 or My First Game if you want. After you've chosen a name, click OK. The editor will begin copying all appropriate files to the new folder that was created with the project name. In the editor, you will now see the first default map that is created. In the center, you will see an icon that represents the player's start location. On the left, you will see the sidebar. The sidebar is made up of two tools. The first tool on the top is the tile set palette. The bottom tool is the project folder. This is where you see all of your game's maps that you create. Let's go over the tile set palette first. As you will see, there are multiple tiles you may click on and choose from. These are the tiles that you will draw the map with. At the bottom of the tile set palette are tabs for each of the sections of the set, split from A to E, with an additional tab labeled R. For now, you may only see tabs A to C, but each tile set will be different based on its configuration, so there's nothing wrong if this is all you see. The A tab is essentially your base tiles. These tiles will contain the different ground and wall assets, as well as mountains, trees, water, and other similar tiles. This tab is going to be typically the one you use first when creating the layout of your maps. It will be easy to tell the tiles that each one represents, such as the water tiles on the top left. Many of the top tiles are what is called auto tiles, which is made up of multiple smaller tiles to allow you to shape the map easily by simply clicking and dragging the selected tile on the map editor. In addition to the auto tiles, there are other tiles that can be used to make up the A tab, and these will be more of a general use type. The tabs B through E are going to be the tiles that are used to provide detail. This includes things like higher detailed mountains for your world map, or even bookshelves, chairs, tables, etc. Anything that can provide the map with more detail. Finally, we have the region tab. This tab is used to paint over your map and will not appear visible in the game. This is typically the last tab that you will use when you are creating your worlds. The regions can have many uses, but its primary use is for telling the game what enemy types the player may encounter, which is a feature we will discuss in a future video. The project folder is where you will switch between your game maps and create new ones. Each map can be created in the root project directory or you can nest them, allowing you to treat some maps as folders to keep things sorted. To create a map, simply click anywhere in the project folder tool and click new. In this window, you are given some control over your map. The name field is where you can enter the name of the map that will be shown in the editor. Display name is what will be shown in game. If nothing is in the display name field when you create your map, some elements in the game itself may display the map name, so be careful of the name you give the map. Additional features you have access to here is what tile set is to be used for the map, the width and height of the map, what kind of music will play in the background, and even the image that will be shown in the background. Some of these features are fairly self-explanatory, but I will cover some of them in another video at a later date. For now, let's just click Cancel to close this out for now. We don't need to create another map. 
let's get familiar with the map editor now, because this is what you'll spend the majority of your time using. Anytime you create a new map, you will be creating a portion of your world. Let's select a tile from the tile set tool on the left. I've chosen the water because I want to turn this piece of land into a small island. Once you've selected the tile you want to use, the rest is as simple as drawing. As you see, I've drawn a circle around the edges. Rather than replacing everything on the edges one tile at a time or by dragging the mouse everywhere, let's select the paintbrush tool at the top. The paintbrush tool works just like the paint bucket tool in most drawing programs. It is used to fill an area made up of one tile with a different tile entirely. As you can see now, our island looks more like an island. Now, let's go ahead and pick a good sand tile to give our island a little more variation. I'm just going to split the island in half, one side sand and the other side grass. To do that, let's pick the pencil tool. We may need to use the paint bucket tool to fill in a few spots we miss. There are three more tools worth noting here, two of which are a fill type. The square and the circle will allow you to click and drag to fill a section of the map in those shapes. The third is a shadow tool. It will allow you to add and remove shadows from places on the map. Some of the auto tiles, such as the wall auto tiles, will apply a shadow to the ground. With this tool, you can remove those shadows if you do not like the appearance of it. In some cases, you may choose to remove all of the shadows on a map if that is what you choose to do. Let's go ahead and click on the save icon on the top left to save our map. Get used to saving frequently in the event of computer issues or anything else that may end up closing the editor as many will attest to the fact that losing hours of work while creating maps and stories is a very real and frustrating thing. In addition to clicking the save icon, you can playtest your game by clicking the play button on the top right. It will immediately ask you if you'd like to save changes. Let's go ahead and click on the play icon. Your game should now open up and you will be greeted with the default title screen and music. With new game selected, press enter or space on the keyboard to start playing. Additionally, by default, you can click on New Game as well. And there you have it, your first playable map. Obviously, there isn't much going on here, but now you've got a basic idea of how the editor functions. At this point, feel free to play around with the different tools and get familiar with them. In the next video, we'll be going over the database to get familiar with another important set of tools in the editor. But for now, here's your homework. Using the current map in your project, enlarge the map to 30 by 30 and choose a different tile set for using the tile set tool. Also consider adding background music or background sound, or maybe both, to your map. Using that new tile set that you choose, create a map and then play it. Using OBS, or even Streamlabs OBS, record a clip of your map and upload it to YouTube and share it with everyone in the comments. If we get enough submissions, I'll share my favorite maps in the next video. As always, if you liked this video, likes and comments are appreciated. If you'd like to keep up on more videos like this, as well as my other content, don't forget to click subscribe. Also, that bell icon helps if you want to receive notifications when a new video is posted, so don't forget to click that too, if you want. Lastly, if you appreciate these kinds of videos and would like to see more of it in the future, I do have a Patreon available for you to support the ongoing creation of this content. It isn't necessary, but it is greatly appreciated. That is all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Stay salty, friends.